Faye, Javi, Mikel04 up for Fnatic, and across from them, it's going to be Morton, Sam, and then So King if necessary. Yeah, that is a terrifying lineup on both sides of the board, honestly. And now Morton has to bounce back from that 2v2 set that it, it looked like they were going to take for a moment there. And, you know, Fnatic just said, no, sir. Morton opening up Furnace, Dark Prince. And up against Hog EQ, and that EQ is going to be frustrating for that Furnace. Morton last season was 2-1 and one in 1v1 sets, 5-3 and three in games. So far, this is only his second head-to-head -head appearance in CRL. And the Furnace Goblin Hut deck again. Wow. Wow, we saw this the other day. Very interesting construction. Now, we did see this one with Barbs and Musketeer as opposed to Dark Prince. Yeah, and I believe it did go up against a Hog EQ deck. Because I remember the EQ having to pick and choose between going on the Goblin Hut or the Furnace. That does sound right. Flying Machine. So I'm wondering if we're seeing... I, are we possibly seeing some sort of fireball bait? Yeah, this is a very, very interesting deck. And the Flying Machine is one of the most frustrating cards in the game if you miss a pickup on it or if you, if your spell comes in a little bit early or a little bit late, it just shoots at your tower from a distance. Morton so far playing this just as you should. Of course, he's taken some damage from those earthquakes. Faye here has to keep in mind about the Inferno Tower placement. Stay out of range of that flying machine from across the river. Three, Three musketeers. musketeers. This is a fascinating deck. Some of the pros in the audience very surprised to see this as well. We have not seen much 3M. I think it's only the second time we've seen the girls with their muskets come out so far. And it is, yeah. uh, it is a fireball bait deck. It's 3M Royal Hogs. This dominated, not this exact construction, but this idea dominated last season. We all know that Morton loves his piggies, and it's very, very exciting to see this deck come out. So now we're in double elixir time. We're going to see if Morton starts putting pressure on. And interesting to note, we talk about this being fireball bait with the EQ and snowball in there. No real direct way to go after either the, the flying machine or the 3M or the Hawks. Inferno Tower comes down, plays some defense here, and bring those hogs all to the center. I think this is going to be very, very difficult for wow. Faye as we get deeper into this sudden death overtime. Yeah, I mean, he just does not have the spell power you need here. And honestly, the the, the DPS, really, just all the way across the board. And he's, got, he's got to just keep pressure on at the best that he can and hope that he can steal that left-hand tower before Morton overwhelms him. And this is exactly what I was talking about with that flying machine up against the Inferno Tower. You see it's just sitting in the safe spot, just picking away Faye's troops. And yeah, it seems near impossible for Morton to lose this match. And look at that flying machine on wow. the tower, tanked for by those hogs. That is devastating. Wow, and he's back to another three Musketeers as well. So here you go, Faye selling out in the right-hand lane with a big, big hog EQ push. And a great push, but it is most likely going to be too little, too late. Those two Musketeers on the left-hand side are unchecked at the moment. One does lock on. And not even splitting, just going all in on one side. And now, yeah, this is, this is going to be a tough one for Faye to bounce back from. Morton doesn't have any direct damage ability whatsoever. This is a this is a except for because Bar Barrel, a no spell deck. So, you know, if Faye can play enough defense to keep him off towers, he could steal this thing. He could keep that 322 up there for a while. And again, that flying machine just sitting pretty, picking off that ice golem. Two musketeers on the left hand side are in. One That's is on the be tower. It. That's gonna be it. Yeah. That is Oh, oh. not quite. Faye, Faye, very, very frustrated. Feeling like he has no answer. And the double, the dual lane push comes in. Prince will connect. That is going to do it with the Hogs on the right-hand side. Oh, or the left. <laughs> there you go. Morton takes the first win of King of the Hill.
and that fireball bait deck just completely overwhelmed Faye from Morton. I mean, a fascinating deck construction, as you said. No big spell in there, no direct damage. Barbells can't get to the tower, but played just perfectly by Morton. I mean, that was just a difficult matchup, top to bottom for Faye. Double building was already going to be def like defensively can buy the time, and then. You know, when you have three Musketeers and Royal Hogs coming down and the flying machine that he really didn't have a good answer for, yep. at that point, just, there's defensively, there weren't a lot of options for him. Yeah, that was that was a brutal, brutal matchup. And yeah, that, that flying machine was just, just picking off the Inferno Tower every single time it came on the board. And two big Hog hits in. And it's Morton's turn to play Hog EQ. I do like kind of the mind game here. You just stomped Hog EQ, and now you're going to go bring it out yourself? Yeah, we've seen that actually a handful of times at CR where the the player plays a, the deck that their opponent just had prior, and I, I love it. I think it's, uh, I mean, we all know how strong this Hog EQ deck is, but that matchup was really, really rough for Faye. <laughs> so Hog's up again in the opposite lane of the Dark Prince. Very nice King Tower activation from Javi. So no play of the Inferno Tower yet for Morton. Hasn't really needed it, obviously, with 25-34 on both towers. Javi just cycling cards in the back, not trying to commit too much anywhere. Although, I uh, will say this version of, of Hog Earthquake is only at three, I think, three wins and five losses. So at a 37% win rate at the moment. And once we get to double Elixir time here, we'll most likely see Javi playing a Golem, and it's going to be a, a, a very curious to see how it matches up. Yeah, Morton really wants to add to that lead as soon as he can. <clears throat> you know, he's doing a good job of keeping Javi from building up Elixir to get himself into a place to play that, that golem. Yeah, a lot of pros have kind of talked about the sweet spot that you want your towers at before you get into double elixir time, before you start your golem pushes. Is if you can defend in single elixir and have your towers over 1,500 HP, you're doing okay. And right now, both of them are sitting pretty, so. Though this hog could change a lot. One shot in, two shots in. Two. Does not get a third, but down to 1069, and now Javi's in a bit of trouble. Golem finally coming down in the weaker lane. He's going to play into where Morton is going to want to hog. You see immediately switching lanes. Giant snowball there makes a little bit of room. Doesn't get uh, the extra value on the prediction side of it, but does make enough room to get down to 835. So the question now is how much will Morton spend on defense here and how much will he sell out in that right-hand lane to try to get this thing done before Javi can get oh. to that tower? And that Lumberjack pulled by the Ice Golem will get to the tower. It does require a lot of defense. And there you go. So Morton does throw the hog. The NATO does take care of it, though, down to 571. That's a fairly healthy golem on tower. Dark Prince behind. 931 HP on that tower. Golemite should bring it below 700. And now Morton very, very behind on Elixir, so he can't throw hogs in the right lane. You see Javi now just throwing up some defensive options. And now Javi needs to play strong, strong defense and figure out a way to essentially beat out this EQ and hog cycle. Needs to get back to NATO. There it is. Interesting choice there to go with the hog. Maybe feeling like he had an elixir advantage, but you got to wonder if maybe cycling back to one more earthquake and snowball would have been a good idea. So now, can this hog get in time? Yeah. And there you go. Javi gets the good game. It. He's out of cycle. That is it. Morton, wow. two up, two down. And that was just so well played by Morton. Now, Mikkel04 coming out for Fnatic is the last guy standing in the way of a Morton King of the Hill sweep. And Morton just made Javi play so off balance, so uncomfortable, always thirsting for Elixir, always happy to change lanes. And, and that's what you have to do when you're playing against Golem. Well, Morton got pretty, pretty low on Elixir there for a while, but just made some very, very good choices, was able to get himself the win, he nearly did lose that left-hand tower. Yep. Very, very close. A great fireball there to push the E-Wiz in range of the Lumberjack. So Mikkel with guards, Lumberjack, and fireball to open up. 
You know, we have seen Guards and Lumberjack together. Now Fireball Zap. Miner to the safe spot, gets a few shots. Neither of the two excellent options for a pickup available in that moment. And Great. now Mikkel just holding, playing Sparky. So with Asuchini not in the mix here, it is Mikkel bringing Sparky out. And, and that E-Wiz is done. of the e -wiz. there we go. Now the best counter for Sparky is out of cycle for Morton. Trying to apply some aggression to the left-hand lane. I, I like the choice to completely ignore it by Mikkel. And you see that great placement of the Goblin Giant off to the left, getting the Lumberjack in front. Raged up, should take out that Inferno Tower, but not in time. Goblin Giant Sparky currently is the leader in win rates across all, all archetypes right now at almost 78%, but only nine plays. Ten, if you count this one. And Mikkel is getting a little frustrated by these miners that Morton has been playing so relentlessly. So into double elixir time, and so far Morton still in the lead, playing very, very conservative. You see him leaking a little bit there, waiting to see when Mikkel will throw out his next Sparky. And you see Mikkel here doing the correct thing and going to his weaker tower, playing into it and Morton as well responding by attacking the opposite lane. One unfortunate shot for Morton from that Musketeer. And using those bats and the Miner demanded that the Zap be used. However, that is not how Morton wanted to defend his Inferno Tower. And the E-Wiz goes down. If he can get that barb off the belt, this might be a Sparky shot if he can oh, defend it just a little be. bit longer. He spent too much on on defense, and that was not spent in the correct way. And that's exactly what Sparky decks do to you. You're in charge, you're in charge, and then all of a sudden you miss one defensive exchange. You mess it up by just a little bit, and Mikkel punishes you. A big win there to extend the life of Fnatic, but Mikkel still has Two more he has to rack up, and the first one of those, it's the Mad Scientist OP Sam. The Mad Scientist was 6-1 and one in 1v1 sets last season, 7-2 and two in King of the Hill. This year only showing one appearance in head-to-head -head play, falling to Flash from Cream. You see the battle at the river here, trying to protect and attack that furnace. You know, we call Sam the mad scientist for all the weird, crazy stuff. He was the only person last year, he was the first person last year to pull out heel. I think first person last year to pull out mirror. He was doing this weird, strange, unpredictable stuff and making it work. And that does something to your opponent. It does something to their mentality. They have no idea what to expect. And that's one of the things about being a pro, being about the best in the world, is that you see a few cards come down, you're like, okay, I know what this deck is, but with OP Sam, that's usually not the case. Royal Giant does get on tower with the e was behind him. Wow, and Lumberjack Dragon. on tower as well. Oh, wow. That was unbelievably well played by Mikkel04. But to be fair, there is a lot coming down the opposite lane right now. Lumberjack is going to rage all of that up. Baby Dragon might be in the mix here, but he has to be very, very careful on defense. Yeah, you see that barbell coming in to stop that raged up. And it's on tower! Dragon. And wow, burn, burn, baby. This is an even game. That was a wild 60 seconds. <laughs> Mikkel just blasted that tower, but the only problem, he didn't have enough to deal with what Sam had in store going back the other direction. Yeah, you saw Mikkel only having enough elixir to roll out a bar barrel, which is not the best response when you've got all those units raged up like that. Made quick work of it and honestly was was almost a waste of elixir at that point. So Inferno Dragon way in the back again. E Wiz out of the way. Will he defend the Inferno Dragon here? Well, choosing to let it go. Does do a bit to that furnace. Lumberjacks meet at the bridge. Lightning comes in. 
That Lumberjack got pretty clean on that Royal Giant. If he can defend here just another second, might be able to prevent all the shots. Yes, he does. Sam picks up the Lumberjack as well. So good defense, although now Mikkel putting pressure on. Yeah, that ranged up Mega Minion will make this Mega Minion from Sam basically ignorable. Mikkel does have two big King of the Hill wins before this match against Diego E and Jose Brayan in their loss to Cream. Guards come down to take care of that E Wiz. Barbarell comes in to stop it. Once again, Lumberjack on Lumberjack, but Mikkel's prevails this time. And a good sized push coming in here for Mikhail. Yeah, he's got a significant elixir advantage right now, all the way up at max. RG's in the back. He'll have plenty of time to build up support behind this. Another furnace should be coming down anytime. Mikkel might be new to CRL, but does have a top finish on ladder back in 2018, not to mention his number two finish at the Honor Cup last year as well. Now Lumberjack demands that the Tombstone be dropped, which then rages up the Royal Giant and is on tower. Look at that. Really nasty on the 646. So Sam in trouble, all sorts of trouble right now, behind on Elixir, behind on towers. But if this Inferno Dragon get no and beautiful timing on the RG, just not gonna let anything else get there. That Inferno Dragon did a little bit more than Mikkel would have liked. But that Royal Giant still gets a shot on the tower. Wow. Wow. Lightning not enough. Going to have to cycle around twice, but he will most likely place an RG maybe in the pocket. There, there it is. Go. RG in the pocket. And a great tombstone from Sam. We all saw it coming, but it is not going to be enough. Look Lightning at gonna that. Lightning going to come in. Could the guards go for a block here? So guards come in. Mikkel knew that was coming, and you can see the look <laughs> on Sam's face. He knows that Mikkel saw that way ahead. Lightning comes in. Mikkel 04 takes out two. One more to go. You know, to the, to the North American audience, Mikkel might not be as familiar, but does have experience in SLO over across the pond. So has played competitively, has played competitively against very, very good players and showing that he's worth being in CRL West today, taking out Morton and OP Sam. One more though, a tough out here in SoKing. Yeah, SoKing has been playing lights out. Clash Royale here not being taken down yet in the King of the Hill set. He did, however, fall to Lindsay in the 1v1 set in their prior match. So both players taking their time. An early lightning comes in and a very, very aggressive lumberjack push with the Royal Giant here. Going to be met by a lot of swarm troops, though. Guess he saw he had the elixir advantage and wanted to press it, but doesn't turn out quite as he would have liked. Still with Elixir Advantage is Mikkel. And you see the shake of the head coming from Mikkel knowing, ah, I maybe should not have done that. Night Witcher card, we haven't seen a ton here. Used to always be coupled with the Golem. We started seeing it coupled with the Giant a little bit more lately in the meta and in Grand Challenges, but basically she's kind of faded into the darkness right now in the current meta. And goes Golem opposite lane, does So King. Right into that 1093, he's already got it down to. And you have to imagine his last card was most likely a NATO, seeing the Ice Wizard and the Baby Dragon. And Mikkel trying to punish here. Lumberjack down on that Golem. You see So King just completely abandoning the Golem, which is a great decision. It will still get to tower. <laughs> and So King is just playing picture perfect right now. Yeah, that's going to be a tower down to 51, so no worries on the right hand side. Lumberjack does get to tower, though. That is going to be a few big swings in. And now, easy, just golem into the same lane as the RG wants to push. Mikkel's going to either have to go straight for gold or go opposite lane, chooses to go right into the golem. That tombstone has been so, so 
so effective for So King this game. So King using the NATO a little less than I would have expected. Yeah. In these first few exchanges. Yeah, that tower does go down, and there is no Golem counter push coming. So Mikkel does a very good job of evening up this game. So So King now will probably Golem in the same lane. There you go. So it's the three crown versus the princess tower. This match just changed yeah. drastically. Yeah, I could not agree with you more. That is a very, very surprising defense that fell flat for So King. And a great fireball coming in for Mikkel 04. This time the Golem pushes the Royal Giant back, but again, So King, too little elixir to, to get, get his NATO in play. It has really been a non-factor so far in a match where you would think maybe it would come in more. Yeah, very, very surprising. Maybe NATOing back just to preserve the health of the Tombstone a little bit longer because the Skeletons will distract the Lumberjack. Who knows? I mean, So King is obviously a top-tier player, but he seems to be really struggling with his defense in this game. So after losing so much HP on the right-hand tower to open up, it looked like Mikkel was going to fall just short, but Look right now he's in a great spot. He was in the pocket, gets a shot. Royal Giant not gonna get a shot this time. It does get oh one. Oh my gosh, it does! One very big shot, and there it is. The second Royal Giant in the pocket. Nothing to catch it. Tombstone comes a second late. Does pick it up, however. I just don't know how So King battles back from this situation. Honestly, there is. I, I don't think there's any way that he does, and Mikkel04 is about to do I think what was the unthinkable for most of us in sweeping Morton, Sam, and So King and a big sweep over SK Gaming. Golem in the pocket. I, I, it's too little, too late. Royal Giant at the river. Tombstone should come down. Two shots in. Needs to get NATO on that. Needs to get NATO on that. There you go. Just in time. No, the Royal Giant gets a shot. That is going to be it. Fireball oh. will come in. You see the look of frustration on So King's face. Mikkel, CO4, 